Hello friends, welcome to the fourth video on introduction of analysis of determinate structure. I am Dr. N. S. Naik from the Department of Structural Engineering, Sanjuni College of Engineering, Kopala. Already in the last video, we have discussed about static indeterminacy, how to calculate static indeterminacy of a structure external as well as internal. As we have already discussed, the external indeterminacy is related to the reactive forces or reactions while the internal static indeterminacy is related to the internal forces. And we have already studied how to calculate degree of static indeterminacy external as well as internal. Now, in this video, we will discuss about kinematic indeterminacy. Many times to analyze the structures using different methods, we have to calculate uh, static indeterminacy as well as the kinetic indeterminacy of given structures. Now here we will discuss about kinematic indeterminacy. Any structure, let it be determinate or indeterminate, is said to have a certain degree of freedom. Degree of freedom means uh, uh, how the structure permits the displacements. That is degree of freedom. The degree of freedom is also called as degree of kinematic indeterminacy and it is denoted by dk with i suffix. The degree of kinematic indeterminacy of a structure is defined as the number of non-zero, the number of non-zero displacement of the structure means the number of unknown joint displacements of the structure. Degree of kinematic indeterminacy of a structure is nothing but number of non-zero displacements of the structure and this degree of kinematic indeterminacy we have to calculate before analyzing the structures. Now let us see different cases. As we have discussed different types of supports. Hinge support, roller support, fixed support, spring support is also there, guided slider support is there and internal hinge sometimes is used in a structure. To determine the degree of kinematic indeterminacy, the non-zero displacement, the non-zero displacements we have to calculate. And how to calculate these non-zero displacements? If there is a hinge, now we are using these supports in case of a beam as well as in case of a frame. So if hinge support is there, then in that case, the kinematic unknown for beam is equal to 1, that is rotation, theta or slope. Same is the case for frame. Hinge support permits single degree of freedom for beams as well as for frames. In case of a roller, roller permits single degree of freedom in case of a beam where 2 degrees of freedom in case of a frame, namely the slope or rotation and the displacement. While in case of a fixed support, this is sign which we are using or symbol which we are using for fixed support. Fixed support, it does not permit any freedom, any degree of freedom for beam as well as for frame. Because at fixed support, the members are firmly fixed. So, it neither permits the rotation nor permits the displacement in case of beam as well as in case of a frame. The next type of support is spring. Sometimes springs is spring is used as a support. And in case of a beam, when spring is used in case of a beam, it permits two degrees of freedom, one rotation and one displacement. Same is the case for frame. It permits permits two rotation, one rotation and one displacement. While guided support or slider, it permits only displacement in case of a beam, one displacement and here also a displacement in case of a frame. If hinge is inserted in a beam, it permits three degrees of freedom, two slopes or rotations and one displacement in case of beam as well as in case of a frame. Now we will discuss each support separately. Let us consider a hinge. Now 
we will consider a beam for which there is a hinge support so this is beam okay and at left hand support let us consider a hinge this is a support a now this is support b and for static statically determinate structure we will consider a roller support at b now here if we add load if we apply load on this beam now because of this load what will happen the member it deflects like this it deflects like this this is deflected shape of the beam now if we draw if we draw tangent to this deflected shape at a it gives us slope and this is nothing but slope at a and thus hinge support it permits a single degree of freedom theta a there is no displacement of support a only rotation is there for beam same is the case for a frame if for a frame let us consider a frame which is hinged at one support and let the other support be a fixed support and is carrying a load w vertical load w on it as shown in figure now here what will happen because of this load this is the possible deflection of columns and beams and if we draw tangent at say support a to the elastic curve which is shown in red color so this is rotation at a hinge and thus in case of a frame also hinge support it provides single degree of freedom single degree of freedom that is one rotation there is no displacement component delta now let us consider the second support roller now in case of a roller we have already discussed roller support here in case of a roller when it is used in beam so again i will draw a new new sketch for a beam this is a roller support and this is hinged support this is support a this is support b now we are talking about roller support now let us apply a load on this beam again a vertical load is acting on the beam now because of this vertical load the beam will deflect like this we have already discussed this figure and this is elastic curve now if you draw tangent to this elastic curve at b this is slope at b and thus the roller support it provides single degree of freedom when it is used for beam theta okay there is no displacement of roller because of this this hinge prevent the displacement of roller here but it permits the rotation so only one rotation is there sorry only one unknown is there that is theta theta b in this case but if it is used for a frame it permits two degrees of freedom first one is slope and second one is displacement delta this is support e now on this frame suppose a load is acting 
W. Now here, what will happen? This roller it can move in horizontal direction because of the deformation of the frame. It may move to new position like this, and hence it permits theta, that is slope. at a as well as it permits the displacement either in horizontal direction to the left or right it depends upon the type of loading so in case of a frame roller provides two degrees of freedom one rotation and one displacement it moves in horizontal direction third is fixed support fixed support as we have discussed the members are firmly fixed at end with the help of this support it neither permits the displacement in any direction or rotation so in case of a fixed support no degrees of freedom for beam as well as for frame so fixed support it does not provide any degree of freedom when used for beam as well as for frame now let us discuss the spring support sometime sometimes spring support is used for frames and beams so let us consider a beam for which a spring support is used at b so this is a spring and now some load is acting on the beam same is the case for frame spring provides two degrees of freedom one rotation one displacement for beam as well as for frame now here what will happen when a load is acting on a beam with a spring support since this is fixed support it will not permit any rotation or displacement but here the support b it moves to in downward direction and hence this is displacement delta of b b moves to new position b dash as well as if we draw tangent to this elastic curve at this point so this is nothing but slope at b and thus spring support it provides two degrees of freedom one rotation at the support and one displacement here in downward direction same type of support if used for frame it permits permits two degrees of freedom guided slider guided slider is a typical support for example let us consider a beam to which a guided support is used so these rollers are guided these rollers are guided to move along the guides and hence it provides it provides or it permits movement in vertical or in horizontal sorry in vertically downward direction or in upward direction depending upon the load so this support it can move in vertical direction either downward or upward and thus glider guided support or slider it provides single degree of freedom that is displacement no rotation it 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 permits only displacement now next important support is hinged support in case of a hinged support if suppose a hinge is inserted internally like this this is internal hinge provided in a beam 
ओके लेटेस्ट से बी नाउ इफ लोड इज एक्टिंग ऑन दिस बीम देन दिस पॉइंट बी विल मूव इन डाउनवर्ड डायरेक्शन and there will be displacement in the downward direction as well as there will be a slope at b so here if you draw tangent this is say theta 1 if you draw one more tangent to this side then this is theta 2 so remember here theta 1 is not equal to theta 2 and thus if internal hinge is used for beams as well as for frames it is inserted in a member it permits 3 degrees of freedom two rotations and one displacement so this is displacement in downward direction and one rotation to the left and second rotation to the right so at this hinge these two members are free to rotate and hence there will be different slopes on left side as well as on right side of the hinge internal hinge and this is the displacement of point b in downward direction and thus hinge support it provides 3 degrees of freedom so this is all about how to calculate kinematic indeterminacy now to calculate the kinematic indeterminacy simply we have to calculate the number of unknown joint displacements for different members we have to calculate unknown joint displacement for different members so in the next lecture we will discuss few structures and we will calculate the degree of kinematic indeterminacy for different types of structures thank you